Hey, welcome to another mini webinar on gods and goddesses. And this one is going to be on one of the more interesting goddesses and certainly one with a hybrid background, the goddess Morgana. And this is just one in a series of our webinars on pagan gods and goddesses. As I said, my name is Dave. So the goddess Morgana. Well, she's a priestess of the old ways, a healer with knowledge of herbal medicines. She's also a shapeshifter and a sorceress, as well as a priestess of the enchanted Isle of Avalon, where she presides over a sisterhood of nine healers. Now, before we go on, I should tell you that over the centuries, Morgana has evolved, and certainly when we talk about the Isle of Avalon, we're talking somewhat on the Camelot myth, which is part of her history, and we'll get into that in just a little bit. But more interesting is the fact that she is a triple goddess, um, and uh, she has a maiden aspect, a mother aspect, and a crone aspect, and you can see uh, that each one of those has a specific name uh, attached to it. But Morgana is probably best known for being the goddess of battle and, of course, of fertility and sexuality. Remember, we talked about Avalon and ties to Merlin and Arthur when we first began this. I, we need to understand something that Morgana did not start out with any ties to Merlin and Arthur. In fact, that came much later in pagan history, and many scholars dispute any ties of the goddess Morgana to Merlin and Arthur, but there are those who do subscribe to that theory. And uh, so she has been incarnated in some pantheons as Morgan Le Fay, the Celtic queen of the fairies, um, because Le Fay translates to the fate or the fairy, and therefore represents healing magic. And in some of the pantheons, and again, this is not the majority of, of pagan or Wicca beliefs, but certainly within some of the beliefs, she was a half-sister to Arthur, whom she hated from the day of his birth. Uh, and perhaps that ties into her being a goddess of battle. And there are many legends telling of her attempts to bring his downfall. And like Arthur, she was also a student of Merlin and an accomplished sorceress. But as I said before, take that with a grain of salt because most scholars who have researched uh, Morgana tend to shy away from the whole Arthur legend and uh, uh, Morgana's ties to it. But if nothing else, she is certainly a evolving goddess. And so before Morgana, uh, Morgan Le Fay and Fata Morgana, there was the Morrigan. And that is where we actually see Morgana as we, for the most part, view her today. She's a goddess whose origins seem to reach directly back to the megalithic cult of the mothers. And the mothers usually appeared as triple goddesses. Again, that would be um, the maiden, the mother, and the crone. And their cult was expressed through battle ecstasy and regenerative ecstasy. They used their magic and incantation and warfare rather than their physical strength. Now, to the Irish Celts, she was Morrigan, the Phantom Queen. And if a warrior saw her before battle, he knew that he would be killed that day. Another guise of the Morrigan is the washer at the ford. And the washer is usually found washing the clothes of men about to die in battle. So in effect, the Morrigan was choosing who will die. I suppose that's one of those times you really didn't want your mother to be doing your laundry. So her beginnings, well, 
she appears to date from around the Copper Age, uh, based on some archaeological findings. Uh, they have discovered in the British Isles, France, and Portugal some stone likenesses of her and that are approximately uh, 3,000 years before the Common Era. Uh, the Morgana often appears in the form of a crow or a raven and is seen accompanied by a group of them at times. And uh, the Morgan, although crow uh, certainly is associated with her, is more closely associated to the raven. Uh, the raven being, of course, of the same species of birds, but a much larger one, and actually a much more ferocious one. Um, and so, just this brief overlook, you can see how complicated and complex Morrigan is in pagan beliefs. In fact, she is one of the most complex figures in all of Irish mythology, and, and that, of course, is not in the least due to her genealogy and the associations, as we said earlier, with uh, mythical figures such as Arthur and Merlin. She's a very versatile goddess. Um, she's a complex goddess. She can be blunt, she can be rough, and she can be violent. She's also one of those that finds you rather than you finding her. And if she calls you and you don't answer, don't expect her to call again. As, as goddesses go, she is extremely fickle. So those who have been called by her and have answered that call are certainly very fortunate. The colors that correspond with her are red and black, and the crow is the animal that represents her along with the raven, as we said. And uh, cows and eels do also, um, and that's because in the very beginning, she was associated with cows in Ireland. Uh, it was an agricultural society. Cows were extremely important to the pagan people at the time. And so they assigned this goddess as a goddess of cows and, of course, eels, because Ireland, as we know, is surrounded by water. Her season, well, we're almost there. Her season is winter. And she takes us through the wheel of life to grow. You know, we said she's a goddess of battle and a goddess of portending death. Uh, and death is a part of life. And you cannot have rebirth without it. And for women, of course, menstrual blood is symbolic to her for it is a woman's primal power that Morgana draws from. And the crone phase of her is the great white goddess. The mother aspect of her is the moon, goddess and queen of the fairies. And her dark aspect, as we have uh, alluded to in this short webinar, deals with war and death. So if you are one of the fortunate ones who have heard the call of this goddess, then embrace it and celebrate it. And if you have not yet been called, remember, she will only call you once. Hope you've enjoyed this brief webinar on our Goddess of the Week. And until next time, merry part and blessed be.